So here we are, episode two of Recorded History, or actually episode one, when I'm calling it that. I've decided to call it Recorded History. Um, on the Enter the Fire episode, it said, you know, hey, is there anything anybody really wants to hear? And the most response I got was a song called, for a song called uh, Opium Skies that came out on our second album from 2005 called The Late Great Planet Earth. It's a uh, concept album. Uh, very, very dark and brooding concept album. Think maybe like Floyd meets Sabbath and King Crimson. It kind of has that feel. It's a really bizarre uh, album that is, is probably my favorite piece of work I've ever done. I wouldn't say it's the, the, the best uh, Moss Generator record for casual listening but as a piece of music as a suite a complete 12 movement suite it's by far my proudest moment as a as a songwriter and an engineer um mostly because it retains its feel all the way through and it sounds like it did in my head closer than just about any other record that i've ever released it, it sounds like it should it retains its feel throughout anyway this this tune uh opium skies uh was written probably i would say in 2002 it was the first song to be written for this this whole project even though it wasn't written for this it was called opium eyes at first and and we had made a demo at temple sound uh, with different lyrics and then it was then placed in the suite sh right after we decided to to do an album about the end of the world let's shave our heads and write an album about the end of the world and that's what me and sean said and and we did so um let's see um it was it's probably it's the simplest song on the record it's the most direct moss generator style song on the record it, it and probably because it wasn't written for this strange thing that hap ended up happening a lot of the other songs are very complex with lots of guitar overdubs and and stuff like that but this one is is one of the three songs that that we could play live after we finished doing this whole thing only three of them we found that a three-piece band could pull off live um even though we attempted some of the other ones at rehearsals, they never really came off right. So, um, let's see. Well, yeah, the, the demo did end up on the Vault Session CD. And uh, we ended up recording another demo of it with the proper, with the new lyrics and the, ch and the title change. And it, and it went in a, in a set of demos. Um, so, recently, I had dumped the the master two inch tapes it was recorded on 24 track two inch and i dumped them down because i'm working on a uh, late great planet earth box set that is going to be released it'll be a a nice set of, of records that kind of catalog the from the beginning through the the end of the process um so I dumped those down, and so we'll be able to explore those today, unlike the Enter the Fire episode. Um, but it opens up with something, with a, with some stuff that wasn't always easy for us. Sean had a really weird time with the timing of this beginning, uh, and there's many live versions of it where we don't make it, or you can hear that there's like thought happening during it. Uh, this is this is from the album version, not a not a multi-track. That ride symbol's overdubbed. I don't remember what guitar and amp I used on this. There might be some video footage of us recording it, so th there might be an inkling. It might have been a, 
an L6S, a Gibson L6S. And I think I was using a Marshall at that time with either uh, one of the old Russian Big Muffs or a Rat Pedal. It sounds more like the Big Muff. Um, so, and then that, that part reprises later in the song. Um, let's see. There's not any real, I can't find any exact uh, influences on this song. I don't know where it came from. I know that Sean liked the riff. I would play riffs and Sean, oh, I like that. And later in the song, he he did write, he came up with the, the breakdown part. Um, I know that there's certain influences, uh, like say in the chorus, there's some guitar influences. <laughs> This is this is the multi track, so we'll to the open sky. So there's some COC type influences. Later on there's some vocal COC type. You won't believe it. You'll never try. So there's that low kind of deep. Take it or leave it. That's a COC thing for sure. Your life is just a testament to genocide. Close your opium eyes. Yep. Lay down your head. Everything's real dry on this. I had, this is pretty much directly off the tape machine. And then the bass is is is. 100% all over this album is 100% John Wetton, King Crimson bass which he's probably using P bass uh, which was a John Wetton bass and he had a 71 SVT with a Sun 215 cabinet, not original speakers. Those things blow up when you try to put one of those SVTs in front of them. Uh, so yeah, bass sound is killer all over the record. It's just that fully, it sounds like, you know, wet and playing through a high watt. And that's what, what we were going for. This album really shows Sean and Scooter as just a, a, a kick-ass rhythm section. The whole album just really they shine on it and they lock in and they do everything just right all every move is uh is is perfect as far as i'm concerned uh, there's little mistakes there's like uh somewhere is a, a stick click which we call a halja like a click uh or a halja and you you know how bands have little things that they little terms they make up when there's a stick click along the way and we kept the stick click i can't remember where it's at but uh yeah i don't know where it's at but um and then we get to this breakdown uh which is a sean riff sean wrote this a little bit like a lead section with the phase 45 it's it's doubled one has a phase 45 and one doesn't I have a tendency to do that when I'm tracking. I, I put one, if I'm going to use an effect on a guitar, I do a, a clean one as well so that I don't, um, if I don't like either one, they're not, then everything's not printed exactly that way. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of times I won't record with anything and then put it later, but sometimes you need that effect to give you what you're looking for during the, the take. Like sometimes I'll use echoes if I'm gonna use a little slap or something on the guitar. I track with the, the echo on it, or, you know, in this case, the phaser. Um, let's see if there's... I, 
<laughs> ah, there's the How'd You Like a Click. Let's listen to that. <laughs> yeah, Sean, I could take that out now if I remix it. There's a King Crimson album where they do that. It's the ends of Lark's Tongues and Aspect Part 2. There's a huge roll that Bruford does, and right around the end, he, he clicks it. And Stephen Wilson remixed it a couple years back. Well, more than a couple, but... Um, and I was at the, when we got, when I got to it, I was listening to it for the first time. I was like, did they take it out? Did they take it out? Yeah. Which is cool. You know, I don't mind that kind of stuff. Cause Steven Wilson did such a great job on, on remixing all those seventies King Crimson records. Well, the ones they could find the tapes for that is, um, nerd alert. Let's see what else, man. Yeah. I, I don't really know. Like the only man, you know, it's it kind of is what it is like it's a pretty simple song there's not a lot to to deal with um it, it's just a heavy rock tune there is a baritone guitar in this as well that i don't think made it on the record timing got all tripped out So that would be like a, a quick run mix and rundown mix. And what it ended up sounding like. I don't think I would ever remix, completely remix Late Great Planet Earth because it would ruin the vision I had for it at the time. It's not perfect, but it sounds like it's supposed to sound. I found that when I remix records of my own, that sometimes, even though there's some things you don't agree with or you, you've changed over the years as an engineer, that those were the things at the time. That wasn't so much the case on, on when that Lantern just got reissued, and I, I think those are much better now. But stuff like Late Great just... You know, I, I like having these so I can get back to the original guitar tracks and and to hear what what I did with a bunch of overdubs. So I'm, I'm coming up, I'm sure that at some point soon I'll do one of the more complex songs from Late Great, so we can go through the guitar tracks and hear all the crazy layering that happened. Um, but until then, I guess we'll just go ahead and call this one good. And maybe I'll do another late great one because I've got these multi-tracks pulled up while we're sitting here. So maybe there'll be another episode sooner than, than later. Or maybe at some point I'll do the whole album. Who knows? It would be a, it's really neat to listen back to everything. And especially to hear how the final product came out when you listen to just the rough tracks with no equalization. And then you listen to the final thing. And this, this record was recorded so oddly. Like, it went through so many changes. It went through three different mediums. It went, it just, and it took a couple of years to finish. And it took a, like an odd toll on me. It was really bizarre. I guess I can go into that later or in the booklet of the box set or what it'll, it'll be written on kind of the details of uh how weird it was to make this record but luckily it it get came out uh satisfactory not all of them do sometimes you listen back to stuff you're like why didn't i that's why i rarely listen to records that like will put out a record or reassure something will come out and it'll it'll show up that oh we got the records today and i'll look at it and put it away i don't want to hear it like i <laughs> i don't want to hear the things that i wish i would have changed so, but then usually after time, you can come back to it. And, oh man, that was, that was, uh, that was cool. I think, you know, we made some good choices on the record. And I mean, usually after a while it can be reconciled, the feelings, but, um, anyway, uh, I'll, I don't have much more to say about this, about this song. Um, but there will be a live, live version of it on the box set and, uh, a demo and uh so yeah it, it, once again if anybody wants to uh wants me to talk about any certain song in the moss catalog or any other 
project that I can pull up. Uh, feel free to comment or do whatever message or something. Uh, this is super cool for me because it's geek zones. So, uh, okay, until next time.